Ik denk dat ons voor u een langer weer gaan we van die dagse wedrennen. Former world champion and Le Mans winner Hans Joachim Stuck takes on South Africa's top driver. Stuck will be behind the wheel of the new Audi Quattro SP4 in its South African debut. Action and drama in practice for the penultimate race in the West Bank Challenge and Chris Aberdeen takes pole position. In the spotlight in the lower classes are Nissan and Toyota, who dominate classes B and C. A record crowd at the Killarney circuit in Cape Town treated to incidents and action galore. A record crowd at the Killarney circuit in Cape Town treated to incidents and action galore. Welcome to the fairest cape of them all, with Majestic Table Mountain providing a regal backdrop to the Killarney Race Circuit, home of the Western Province Motor Club and some of the most vociferous race fans in South Africa. We have a record crowd at Killarney for the penultimate round of the West Bank Challenge, with German 8 Hans Joachim Stock behind the wheel of the new Audi Quattro SP4 GTO, adding spice to the occasion. break for those still in with a chance of championship honours. There's a touching note too with many of the competitors carrying get well messages for BMW works driver Tony Viana who's recuperating after cancer surgery. Tony's teammate local boy Dion Jaber currently leads the West Bank Challenge Championship and would like nothing better than to clinch matters at his home circuit. Ever help on some steps between BMW and Volkswagen. We pick up the action during official practice with an early hint of controversy and action to come tires midway through the practice session. This contravenes the regulations with comments from West Bank Challenge controller Dick Sorensen. You pick a set of uh, compound tires that you want to do your uh, qualifying on and they're the tires that you use for the first race. That's what the book says. Uh, I allowed them to put another set of tires on because these sort of tires were bad. And we'll sort the thing out. I haven't made a final decision. I've got to discuss it with the clerk of the court. The Delta Racing Calibra in the hands of Mike Briggs suffers engine trouble early in the session. But all is well with an Audi cap, with Chris Aberdeen showing his liking for Killarney by setting the early pace. When Briggs goes out onto the circuit again, there is no oil in the power steering system, and this needs stopping up. There is more controversy when Aberdeen and Ben Morgenroot are credited with the same time and the organisers award pole position to Morgenroot. The Audi camp is unhappy and plead their case. No, just that these two we swapped around because Chris went out and got the time quicker time first. Ah, okay, okay. so he gets qualifying time. Aberdeen takes pole with Morgenroot alongside him. Stuck is third with Saro van der Merwe fourth after his times on the new set of tyres were scrapped. With the cars out on their warm-up lap for heat one, let's listen to what some of the drivers have to say. In, uh, for me, it's nice to come to South Africa. It's a nice place to be here, to, to spend racing with a few other fans, here, having a, a poster made up there, come on. It's, I mean, it's like at home, it's fantastic. It makes it nice to be here. It gives you a good feeling. So I go really well here, the cars as well. I think the two hairpins suit the four wheels out system. Um, beginning of the year, we got pole position and won the first heat. We had engine failure in the second heat, but uh, yeah, it always seems to go very well here. I hope we can do it again today. I'd like to win today. It's very competitive racing. I think that's what uh, has been missing in the past in West Bank racing. The cars by themselves are spectacular, and what we need is, is four or five cars having a good race, and I think, I think that's what we've got now. We're certainly going to try and bring up our end of the bargain. We just need a win, and then we'll feel a lot better. I think it's good because I know this track backwards because I've run here but I think it's behind folded. But uh, yeah, we're on pole. Well, I've had a bit of a problem with the bird valve and we fixed that now and the car's going even better. A full field of cars comes streaming down the Killarney back straight. With all the cars running on racing slicks, the drivers are weaving from side to side to warm up the tyres to optimum operating temperature. And it's now that the old adrenaline really starts to pump. Up towards the start line, and we're going to get a bird's eye view of the start from the race cam mounted on the back of Chris Aberdeen's boastful Audi. As the man on pole position, Aberdeen controls the pace as they approach the start line and wait for the green light. Aberdeen is out in front of Hunk Stock in the new Audi. Ben Morgan Root is slotted into third, Saro van der Maude is fourth, with Mike Briggs forced to take the long way around Holbrook. 
the rest of the field is safely through hold, and the chase is on with Aberdeen leading stock. Morgan Rood is third in the Mazda, with Ponomerva fourth in the Sassel Ford Cougar, and Terry Mark fifth in the Rossman's Audi. Into Volkswagen corner they go for the first time with the Class B cars coming into the picture. The order up front is unchanged with Dion Jubert leading Larry Wolford and Johan Kutzia in the Class B battle. We are halfway into lap one and already the Class A cars have opened a big gap over the smaller capacity classes. Down the main straight they come at around 260 kilometers an hour and Stuck is going to have a look at getting past Aberdeen under braking for Stanick. Great pictures from Aberdeen's race cam, and now we ride with Johan Kutzia in the Gearmax Nissan Skyline, who is on the stick of Class B action. Across the line go the leaders for the start of lap two. Aberdeen leads Stuck, Morgan Rudy still third, and Fondamava fourth and Moss fifth. Stuck is determined to let Aberdeen know just where he is, with the former world sports car champion starting to pile on the pressure. was having another look down the inside, but Aberdeen held his line as we ride with veteran Richie Jute in the BMW 323. Jute is lying third, but coming under pressure from local hero Serge Santo in the dealer team Toyota Sprinter, who made a challenge as he sets off after class leaders Dave Repsold and George Vesadino. We're on lap three with an anxious moment for Vesadino in the Nissan Sentra as he takes to the dirt at Volkswagen. Up front, things are starting to happen, with Strzok making another move on the inside at Stanley. Great action from the race cam, and it looks as though Strzok is through this time. And we have a new race leader. Aberdeen is forced out wide, and Ben Morgenrude is also putting in a challenge. The man at work signs are up in the cockpit of the Sabat Nissan Skyline, with Larry Wolford involved in a tremendous Class B dice, with Johan Kutzia in the Gearmax Skyline, and Dion Jaber in the works BMW 325. Now we ride with former hot rod champion Johan Kutzia, with Larry Wolford sneaking up on the inside as they approach the kink, leading into the start-finish straight. World sports car champion in 1985, twice the winner at Le Mans, and former German touring car champion is a record that says it all for Hans Jochen Stuck. There are some anxious faces in the Ben Morgenrude pit, with Stuck still out in front, and being chased by Chris Aberdeen, Morgenrude, and Terry Mark. have lost Sorrel von der Merwe and the Sassel Ford Cougar, and there are also anxious faces in the Ford pit. The Sassel Ford has dropped out on the circuit, and the exuberant Cape fans are giving a distinctly unhappy supervan a roasting as he walks towards the pit. Back to the action on lap 7, with a tremendous scrap going on between arch-rival Serge Danzo and Dave Repsol. The two Toyotas are side by side down the main straight. Danzo and the dealer team Sprinter on the left of your screen as the inside line and is going to force his way ahead of Repsol in the Automark Corolla. Repsol is forced to tuck in behind Danzo. Up front there has been a change in the order. It is now Audi 1, 2 and 3 with Hans Stock leading from Chris Aberdeen and Terry Moss. Ben Morgenrude is back to fourth in the Mazda. the race cam on Chris Aberdeen's car as he muscles his way past Dave Repsold in Hull Hook. Just look at the speed differential between the Class A supercars and the Class C runners. Behind Aberdeen, a fired up Terry Moss is looking to challenge for second place. Terry Moss is climbing all over Chris Aberdeen. Moss won second place from his teammate and has the bit between his teeth as they head up towards Volkswagen Corner. The charge is on as we go back to the race cam, and Moss has hit a back marker. Off goes Terry Moss in the Rossman's Audi. We have drama with Moss into the dirt after whacking into Neil Dunnicliffe's golf. Back onto the circuit he comes, and Moss is underway again, but the Audi suspension looks to be damaged. Drama for the Audi cap, but out in front, Hans Stuck is still our race leader, and coming into Stanley Corner for the last time. Hans Stuck will give the new Audi Quattro SP4 GDO a win first time out. Chris Aberdeen is second in the Bosal Audi and Ben Morgan is third in the Mazda 323. <laughs> Jubilee.
Grayson from the Audi Mechanics with a 1-2 triumph and a debut win for Hans Stock and the Quattro SC4 GTO. Ben Morgenrud is third with Perry Moss managing to limp home fourth ahead of Class B winner Johan Kutzea. Championship leader Dion Gebert is second in Class B with third Stanzo taking the Class C honours ahead of Dave Repsol. I must say I'm very impressed. It's a very demanding circuit. Uh, it is not uh, the very best one in the world. I mean, there are much better ones, obviously, where Formula One can be done. But uh, this kind of racing in modified saloons and in, uh, in West Bank cars is no problem. The track is wide enough. It's very demanding, fast turns, slow turns, a hairpin. And so it's fine. I mean, uh, it's a challenge, you know. I mean, I raced for 21 years, and every track I've been new on, it's an, it's an adventure for me. And I gain experience, so that's how I take it. Super Dauer. Now, pole position is everything, because you can dictate the start of the race. Um, especially with my car that has a little bit less horsepower than the other cars, if I can just dictate the start of the race and get into the first corner first. 